So this is another absurdity slash political uh, video. I'm out hiking the Alpata Trail. I just thought I'd uh, make a brief thing about thoughts on my head. The uh, <clears throat> the first one uh, was is education for you. Um, so last night I you know I finally got onto the computer because the dog had. My wife took the dog, so I wasn't hang, didn't have him to hang out with. So I said, "Well, I got to get back to work. Uh, this isn't work here. I mean, this is this is me hiking and having fun. But I mean, I, when I say work, I you know paying the bills and stuff. So I, my um, car insurance had come due, and uh, so I said, "Well, I, I'll go ahead and pay that bill." So I you know I log into uh, the Progressive website because <clears throat> that's who I got my car insurance through. By the way, that's uh, for Florida. That's about the cheapest car insurance around that I've been able to find and, and the nice thing is the longer you're with them without an accident because I'm a real real careful driver uh, I'm, I'm an old fart you know I, I barely do five over the speed limit you know and boy that frustrates some of the rednecks around here they, they'll whip around me at 100 miles an hour but anyway uh, so I, I log in and first thing I notice is uh, my wife's cart I mean it wasn't active but it was on my automobile policy I said well because I knew I, you know, I called them up to get her car off of the auto policy because she needed to get her own automobile insurance, uh, which I think she's done. I don't know. Um, so, I, so I call up Progressive. I said, "What's this all about? Why is there a cart?" Because I said, "I've never put my car. I have a golf cart, but it's only worth a thousand bucks. I'm not going to insure it. If it explodes tomorrow, I don't care, you know. But um, I mean, I'm hoping it'll last me a while. But uh, you know, the batteries on those things only last so long." And I hardly ever use it. You know, now that my, my wife's gone, I might play a little more golf at some point. So that'll be nice. And plus, I can take it down to the gym and whatnot. Um, good to be me, right? Good to be king. But uh, so, um, so you know, they're, and they're like, well, you know, your wife's name is still on your policy. I said, how is that possible? I said, how do I get her name off of the life uh, or the car insurance policy? They said, well, you can't unless, you know, you go get a notarized uh, consent form that she can be removed from your automobile policy. I said, well, the car's not on there. And they said, well, you know, that doesn't matter. She, she's still, you know, uh, attached to my, uh, my automobile policy. So I said, okay, all right, well, what do I got to do to get her off? You know, they said, well, you got you to gotta set up a whole new policy. I said, well, is that going to carry over all of my rewards? You know, because I'm a platinum member, soon to be diamond. That's what they call them, you know. Sounds like Amway, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, so they said, "Well, no, we, you know, we gotta, we gotta get a whole new policy." I said, okay, I said, "Well, just transfer everything over and open a new policy if that's what you got to do." I said, "Am I gonna need a whole new login and everything?" Yes, you will, you know. And we'll just, we'll just close out this policy. Said, okay, that's fine, you know. I got no problem with all of that. And uh, so they did it, and they said, "Well, now we gotta transfer you to a, a technician or a customer service specialist." I said, what for? Well, they got to they got to ask you uh, a bunch of questions. I said, about what? You already got all my information. And they said, well, no, they got to they got to re-interview you on everything. So I guess I, I bet I was on the phone. I don't know, three hours at least, maybe four. I don't know. But I mean, they they wanted to know, you know, have I been in any accidents? I said, do you know whether I've been in any accident? I've been in an accident. You would have had a claim, you know. So now my wife was in an accident. And they said, well, yeah, that, that, uh, we can, we can get that on, you know, that, that won't be on your new policy. It was on your old policy. I said, son of a gun. It's a good thing I'm getting a new policy, right? And, uh, so they, they ask all these doggone questions. And, uh, and in the end, you know, they asked me, um, I don't know if you, you're probably your insurance company does it too. You can attach this thing in, in underneath the console or underneath the steering wheel, uh, to, uh, monitor your driving. Uh, it's an invasion of privacy for sure, but... I'm such a conservative driver, I don't mind doing it. And it does give you a discount, but you have to leave it on there for six months. And uh, so that's kind of a long time. If you're, if you're, if you're a heavy-footed uh, person, you know, or don't drive very careful, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't put it on because it does beep at you when, because uh, I've done it before. And that's another thing, why do I have to do it again? <laughs> but it is a new car. But in the end, it was worth it, okay? Uh, one, I got my wife's name off of my automobile policy and I made sure her cart's not part of my automobile policy, thank God. And uh, number two was I was shocked it saved me a hundred dollars every six months. So I, I don't know what you pay for your car insurance, but mine is only running me, it was 500, 
Well, it used to be about $680 or so. Now it's down to $570. Uh, for brand new Toyota Prius Prime, I mean, that's pretty, and I've got the max, you know, I got everything maxed out. You know, that's, that's another thing. I used to have that uh, universal um, uh, uh, liability insurance. I got rid of that. And uh, so now I just use the, um, the automobile policy because really the only liability that I've got, I mean, if the guy falls off the lawnmower and it runs over him in my yard and he wants to sue me, <clears throat> well, so be it, you know, I mean, but, but that's about the only thing, you know, we don't have snow and ice and sidewalks. That was the main reason I carried it up in Michigan was if somebody slips on the sidewalk in front of your house because you had to go to work that day and you, could, you didn't get the snow shoveled, you're liable for it, you know, and uh, so stupid stuff like that. But nobody, I'm at the end of a cul-de-sac, my house, nobody even comes. I mean, I, I don't even have visitors, you know, my, my mail person just puts it in the mail. So where in the world would my liability be except driving a vehicle you know if I were to injure somebody driving a vehicle then uh, that that's where the liability insurance would come in and so that's why on my automobile policy I max out the liability and I, I'm, I'm telling you you should too um, because uh, well unless you got universal I mean liability but uh, but if you don't I mean you know because I want to make sure you know I've got the covers let's say you know for whatever reason <clears throat> I'm found at fault in some sort of accident and you know I'm liable you know I want to make sure that I've got the maximum amount of insurance that I'll pay the maximum amount uh, so that they can't come after my retirement um, which is being diminished as we speak uh, I'm still got to come up with 40,000 to pay my wife unless I, I disagree I haven't looked at all the terms of the divorce yet I'm still assessing what she's taken out of the house and and trying to crunch all the numbers and see if I agree with her attorney uh, and then I'll probably try to get a phone conversation, which uh, here's another thing for you. Um, because I just get disability and nothing else. And by the way, I, another reason I wasn't hiking yesterday is I had a, had a real bad day. Um, you know, this is the reason why it's hard for me to get a job and work. I mean, no way I could have worked yesterday. I was so sick. Oh man, every, every, I won't even gross you out, but every 10 minutes I was in the bathroom. It was brutal, man. But I felt good today, and so I wanted to get out and get a hike in so uh anyway peace out that's it for this video you have a good one i hope that educated you a little bit on uh car insurance and uh, uh you know a divorce and you know all the things that you don't even think about I, I never even dreamed that she was still on the automobile policy and what it wasn't until her golf cart her new golf cart she bought a new golf cart uh <clears throat> so uh, wherever she is i think she's at her at her sister's house or something all right so let's let's get back to the hike While I'm hiking along, I thought I'd add a little something, look at all the birds here, a little something to the absurdity uh, video. I love making those. But here's, uh, here's my question. Maybe you can leave me a comment below. Okay. So, if getting, and I, I, I can't call it a vaccine. See, a vaccine, like the smallpox vaccine, is intended to stop the disease. And I don't think anybody would argue that getting the smallpox vaccine uh, to protect other people from, you know, especially the spread of smallpox and to, to neutralize that virus. I think smallpox is a virus, or no, no, probably, I don't know, disease, I guess I should say, um, is, is important, you know. And, and I would say, I, I don't think you need to mandate it, but I, I think it, you know, some, some states did way back in the day, and that's the argument. That was the Jameson case back in, I think it was 19, 1904 or something like that. And uh, they, they basically the rule them was the states can mandate uh, getting the smallpox vaccine because it was and, and that was also a very lethal disease. A lot of people were dying from that. But anyway, so here's my question to you. All right, so if this, if the jab, I won't call it a vaccine because it's not a vaccine. It doesn't stop the disease. You can still get Omicron. A lot of people with the with the booster to the booster to the booster are still getting the Omicron and spreading it around. So if the vaccine doesn't stop the disease. What's the point? Or the jab. Let's call it the jab. Don't call it a vaccine. What's the point of getting it? Okay, number one. And number two, if it does uh, mitigate, uh, you know, how sick you're going to get when you get the disease. So let's say uh, an unvaxxed person sits down next to you and he's, he doesn't have the disease and you are vaxxed and you've got the disease. Who's posing the greater threat there? The vaxxed person with the disease or the unvaxxed person that doesn't have the disease? Give me an give me answer to that question below. 
And also, if it does mitigate uh, your uh, your um, reaction to the virus, and a vax person sits down and they got the disease, and you don't have the disease, but you catch the disease, and all you're going to do is get a little sniffle, what do you care? Okay, that means that, that the vaccine worked, right? So, I guess, I, you know, I'm trying to understand this whole, uh, you know, if you're not vaxxed, you're uncleansed. Boy, the birds are out today. If you're unvaxxed, you're, you're, you're unclean, you know, you're... you're you should be put in a concentration camp, you know, whatever. I mean, I, the, the whole thing doesn't make any sense. And if the CDC actually had to change the definition of what a vaccine is, that I, it just mitigates the, uh, the reaction to the virus rather than uh, prevents you from getting it. I, I, I don't get it. And plus, you know, there's, like I said, there's been a lot of reactions to that vaccine. Maybe leave some comments below. Tell me what you think. All right, man. Never seen so many birds on a hike before. This is great. So as I hike back, I wanted to add one more thing to the absurdity video. And this is, uh, you remember about way back when this thing started, we were talking about herd immunity. Okay, and uh, I had idiot Fauci, uh, he was saying something about once 70% of the population has gotten the, the, uh, the virus, uh, that uh, we will have achieved herd immunity, which just means that uh, the transmission and the existence of the virus would just, uh, you know, basically be non-existent. So, so now we've got this uh, Omicron thing going around, and uh, I, I just heard they've lifted the travel ban from South Africa are going to, because uh, the, the uh, it's not very, uh, uh, well, it's it's not killing a lot of people. Let's just put it that way. It's, just like a mild cold from what I understand. So here's here's my proposal. You know, rather than sitting here and enriching the drug companies, they, you know, if you wanna call them pharmaceutical companies, I call them drug companies because they've pushed every bad drug known to mankind. I don't think they're, they're, not, they're, they're in it for the profit. They're not in it, in it for you. And that's, you know, that's why a lot of people have uh, a hesitancy to the jab. Uh, it's not a vaccine, it's, it's the jab. But, uh, so why not? intentionally and you know have because uh, we've got treatments now why not intentionally infect people with the omnicron variant and just get it over with right because you know you can make sure that you know the time it for the job you know so if you're working for for an airline you know go out get infected with the omnicron you know monitor it and then uh when you're over it okay because we know and here's here's another thing i know a lot of people don't understand this natural immunity is a lot better than the jab okay it's been shown that you can't get the virus, uh, at least for up to a year. I'm not sure if it goes beyond that, but you can't get the virus because you have natural immunity. And if you want to study that, it blocks more receptors uh, that you know allow the virus to get into your cells and, uh, and infect you. So why not go around, let's infect everybody with Omicron and get to herd immunity and just forget the damn jab. You know, tell those pharmaceutical companies to go stuff themselves and, uh, and just get this thing over with, you know. Is that, does that sound crazy? Put, leave me a comment below if you think that sounds crazy. You know, because I, if I find somebody with Omicron, I'm going to intentionally infect myself. But I'm going to make sure that I've got the treatments lined up, you know, just in case it, it, it turns south. You know, so, because uh, cause I've already had the, uh, I think I had the first one. I didn't get the Delta. And maybe my immunity is getting, getting a little, boy, there goes another bird. Uh, getting a little, uh, little long in the tooth, uh, my natural immunity, that is. So maybe, you know, if I can infect myself with that Omicron, I think that'd be a much more, whoops, so yeah, get to talking. I almost went down the wrong path. I infect, my, infect myself with the Omicron intentionally, so then I don't have to worry about it anymore, right? I think that's a, a more effective solution. Uh, and then, then we can get to herd immunity and, uh, and everybody will be immune. There you go. Why isn't anybody talking about herd immunity? Leave a comment below. You know, there's a reason that I listen to talk radio, not, 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 not just to be a news hound, but uh, you do get some interesting things that come in. A guy just called in, and I thought it was a brilliant argument, because, you know, they changed the definition of a vaccine, and, uh, and you know, it's no longer to prevent a disease, it's to mitigate the response to the disease, and, in other words, so that, you know, you don't get as sick uh, from the jab, okay? So... Wouldn't that, you know, wouldn't that broader definition include, let's say, vitamin D? We know that vitamin D is very effective 
uh, in, as a preventative of the uh, of the um, the virus. Okay, so what doesn't that make vitamin D a uh, a vaccine, right? So then, if you if you if you want to broaden that out, how about ivermectin? Doesn't that mean because ivermectin is good for for uh, mitigating the response to the virus? Um, I, I, you know, a lot of people argue against that. I, I know too many people that have taken it that uh, did very well. So th that means ivermectin is a vaccine. How about hydroxychloroquine? Doesn't that make hydroxychloroquine a vaccine? Uh, or let's say uh, remdesivir. I guess that makes remdesivir a vaccine. So if the CDC wants to change that definition, let's go ahead and add all these things and call them vaccines, right? Because they, they mitigate the response to the virus. There you go. I thought that was a real good argument.